Got it. So you want it to be a secure base layer that doesn't have too many features and really lets the innovation happen on top. But you have things like privacy and security and yeah. consensus at the yeah. core layer. But the, the big application that everyone is obsessed about, in fact, I think the reason why people are so interested in cryptocurrencies these days is just because they're making money off of them. Yeah. So the fundamental application right now seems to be just money. And Bitcoin seems to be willing to, uh, the protocol is in service of the currency. And here it seems almost the opposite. Is that fair to say? The currency is um, in the service of the protocol. Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely say that is our philosophy. Although, I mean, yeah, like the f it's definitely the case that there's a lot of adoption purely because of like people's speculative interest. But then, on the other hand, like that's not you know, like that has a bad side and a good side, right? And I think one of the good side, basic good sides, really is that, in part because of this, you know, there actually is a lot more interest in the possible social benefits of the decentralized technology than there are in you know, like many of the other approaches that have been tried like, over the last decade. Like, if you look at diaspora, you know, great idea, ended up failing completely. Right? And you know, like, a, a lot of these kind of decentralized projects tends to not work very well, and in a large part because basically lack of funding and just lack of a kind of good incentive for you know, actually building out the infrastructure. You know, whereas here in the cryptocurrency land, you know, base, you know, there's a lot of money, and at least that one particular problem can be solved. Right. So now, because we marry the economics to the crypto, the incentive issues are solved, and economic incentives can unite people in, in a way that pure politics cannot. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, like crypto is really ultimately all about incentives on multiple levels, from the community all the way down to, you know, like the security of the consensus protocol. Like, you just cannot reason about security of, you know, like, crypt like blockchain consensus protocols without reasoning about economics. You know, it's not about if to if you know like half of these people are honest, then we can prove the system is secure. Or or you know, if magic bob in the sky is honest, we know the system is secure. It's it, you know, the system is secure because we have mathematical proofs that say if the system breaks, then the guy who did it loses a hundred million dollars. Right, so that, like, that's what we mean by crypto economics. Like combining together this kind of cryptography, mathematical proofs, and economic uh, game theory reasoning all together. So if you assemble all this together, it used to be in God we trust, then it used to be in nation states we trust. Now it's going to be in math we trust. Yeah. Uh, are, they, are the nation states going to take this lying down? You just came back from China. You <sighs> saw what's happening there. Yeah, I mean, it's in the way that, like, traditional pol uh, po political or just economic powers are going to respond to all of this as like definitely going to be a bi I, I think a big part of the story over the next few years like if you and it is you know ultimately it really does disrupt traditional power structures and you know whether it's Washington you you know in New York or Silicon Valley you know you know it's it really does you know pose like pose serious challenges to the way that things are are, are working now but and on the other hand, it's one of the things we've, re we've learned actually is that a lot of the people even inside these power structures seem, uh, you know, not, not all of them, but at least some of them seem quite friendly to you know, these, like, uh, these ideas of disruption. You know, like there are definitely in, are plenty of you know, JP Morgan employees who are really excited about the possibilities of you know, like blockchain technology. And you know, like it's... You know, the fact that you work for a large company or that you work for a government, you know, doesn't mean, you know, doesn't mean that you're a hopelessly boring suit, right? Like one, one of my uh, in favorite examples of this is that in uh, Taiwan, there's um, a politician named um, Audrey Tang, and she is descri and she's transgender, and she describes herself as a, a conservative anarchist, and yet she is the head of, I believe, like the digital ministry of. Uh, uh, of uh, the Taiwanese government, right? So you know, like you, these these kinds of people, ex you know, the, you know the, the, this is obviously you know, like oh, someone who's you know particularly special, and she has been recognized as you know like one of the ten you know gr uh, gr uh, kind of greatest programmers there. But you know, to, to much uh, much later degree, lesser degrees, these kinds of kinds of people do exist, and large organizations organizations in general are complex, right? You know, you have. 
You know, like people with one belief, or kind of belief on one side, with another kind of belief on the other side. Even if you look at the Chinese government, like their kind of their response, I think, is clearly going to show that you know there are different groups of people inside of the government who have like different ideas about which direction they want to go. And you know, like lately, if you look at all the news about like re them regulating VPNs and chat groups and so forth, it's obvious that kind of. The arc of this decade is that the conservative side over there is winning, and you know, I mean, to be fair, a lot of those things are happening in many other places in the way, in the world as well. But you know, like it's large organizations are definitely still diverse. It's amazing China is finding out that its、uh, financial and capital control policy boils down to its firewall policy. Yeah.、Um, so we could talk for hours. I mean, Vitalik's knowledge is incredible. Here we've just scratched just the、yeah. bare surface.、Yeah. I encourage you to follow him on Twitter. Um, where he's incredibly good-natured about all the trolls that are constantly attacking him, so don't be one of those people.、Yeah. Um, and learn everything you can about Ethereum because it really is very much the future in cryptocurrency. So,、uh, thank you for having for being with us, Vitalik, and after your short trip to China.